Ah, <laughs> oh, suck it, Calipari. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7 The Buzz. Com. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. How about them hogs? What a win last night for the Razorback basketball team going into Rupp Arena and winning by a final score of 88 to 73. A 15-point win tied for second largest margin of victory over the Wildcats in program history. And how sweet it was. I will admit yesterday on the podcast, I didn't feel too good about going into this game. I didn't feel like Arkansas had uh, really good chances just because going on the road in the conference is tough. And going up against the Kentucky team that had been playing really well, had won six straight SEC games. It just didn't feel like this would be a game that uh, Arkansas would be expected to win. And I am so happy to report that I am eating all the crow today. I was completely wrong. And I am happy about it. I am so thrilled. What a performance. Just what a game. Arkansas takes care of business. Great performances from beginning to end. First half, second half. Offensively, especially 88 points. Are you kidding me? Against the Kentucky team that only gives up around 63 points a game. You're saying you score 25 more points than what Kentucky averages on defense? And you did it in their home arena? Are you kidding me? No, it's true. What a game. I just want to go through all the guys that, that played so well. Like Everybody on the team played great. Everybody on the team played great. Uh, I got to start with Anthony Black, though. Anthony Black it continues. like When it's big games, when it's big moments, when the, when the spotlight is on, the dude shows up. And, man, did he show up. He goes in this game, gets 19 points, 8 of 15 from the field, didn't hit a 3, goes 3 of 4 from the free throw line, did have... Six turnovers, way too many, way too many turnovers in this game. But added in four rebounds, five assists, five steals, and one block shot. The dude is a box score. Like I, I, I just want to like compare it to where it's like he he doesn't know what goose eggs are. He doesn't know what zeros are on the stat line because this dude's gonna get stats. He's gonna get numbers in every regard: blocks, assists, steals, rebounds, whatever it is. There's no such thing as a goose egg for this guy when it comes to the box score. I mean, it'd be nice if he had a turnover set of goose egg. But still, you know what I'm saying? Like, he he does it all and just showed up in a major way last night. Ricky Council did great things, too. 20 points out of him led all scorers in this game. And what was crazy about him is that he went five of nine. So it wasn't like he hit a bunch of field goals. He did go two of three from the three-point line, which was great because we know Ricky uh, sometimes doesn't always hit his threes. But going eight of ten from the free throw line was crucial, especially down the stretch. He gets 20 points, brings in also four assists three rebounds, has a great game out of him. Devo Davis, uh, just Devo, 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 Devo. 15 points, 6 of 11 from the field, 1 of 2 from the three-point line, 2 of 3 from the free-throw line, but this is what I love the most, 7 assists. 7 assists for Devo Davis, 3 rebounds. Did have 3 turnovers, but also had 2 steals in this game. So all three of those guys, those are the three best, like the guy... I will say that we always look to count on people or to count on players to bring it in these games consistently. Those are the three. I mean, those are the, those are the three guys, Black, Council, and Davis. Those are the ones that have to be able to get to double digits every single game or at least be able to pour into the stats. And they performed tremendously last night. But honestly, they as great as they were and as great as their numbers may have been, I don't know if they were the player of the game, at least not to me. The Mitchell twins, but particularly Mikel Mitchell, that dude was electric. So offensively, Mikel had 15 points in this game, four rebounds, five block shots, no turnovers. Okay. Makai Mitchell played less, just a few minutes less, but only had four points, but also poured in nine rebounds, two assists, and one steal. So those two guys not only had really good offensive games, or at least Mikel Mitchell had a really good offensive game. But they frustrated and completely shut down, completely shut down Oscar Shibway. Shibway had seven points and seven rebounds in this game. He's a guy that was leading all scorers for Kentucky. 
He goes three of six, uh, has uh, a turnover, does get three steals and one block. So, I mean, he had some, you know, some numbers there too, but played 32 minutes in this game and was really a non-factor. Cason Wallace was the one that uh, was able to really pour it in. 24 points for him for Kentucky. Uh, had five assists and two blocks and three steals. Like a really good game. Uh, did have five turnovers, but he was really the only bright spot for Kentucky. And I think a lot of the credit, if not all of the credit, in slowing down Shibwe was due to the Mitchell twins just playing so great defensively. I mean, Mikel Mitchell getting five block shots. That's something. That's big time. And I was always a little bit concerned going in, not only to this game, but just in future games of, all right, well, how will Arkansas look once they get up against big physical guys? Because we know under Muss, they haven't had those big physical guys to go up against them, so they usually got beat pretty handily down low. You know, last year, Oscar Sheba, I think, went for 30 and 18. Uh, Colin Castleton, always bring that up, which Arkansas is going to have to play him later this year, at least it's at home. But, you know, he had a big game last year because Arkansas just didn't have the horses to be able to go up against some of these big-time dudes down low. Well, you do if Mitchell twins, especially Mikel Mitchell plays like that and is able to do what he did last night. So I love those guys. I, th they are getting so much better and you're being able to count on them so much where, you know, before the season started, they were great transfers that were coming in, but they were still going to be at least on paper, like your eighth option, like seventh, eighth option when it comes to the talented guys, but they've really come into their own and really started doing a really good job of just playing solid, not making a bunch of mistakes, taking good shots when they do get the ball, uh, not turning it over. I mean, it, it's just, I can't say enough about him. And also a big shout out to Jordan Walsh. He, he came in off the bench, didn't miss a shot, goes, has 13 points, goes four or four from the field, hits his one three-pointer that he hit, had four or four from the free throw line, so very efficient. Uh, did have one offensive rebound and one block. And, uh, did get four fouls, but still uh, just, uh, just a great game out of him too. Everybody played great. Everybody played great that got into the game. You didn't see a whole lot of Jalen Graham because you didn't really need to because of the Mitchell twins and how they were playing. Pinion got in for a little bit. But it was really about the guys that just walked in there and just played about as efficient as you could ask. Arkansas did turn the ball over 11 times, which is so much better than what they have been doing. 18, uh, or excuse me, the 19 assist. 19 assists, 11 turnovers is always a big time thing. I'd like to know, it has to be close to maybe a season high with 19 assists. Free throws. This was big. Free throws. Arkansas goes 20 of 24 from the free throw line. Incredible. 83%. Four of nine from the three-point line. So they didn't jack up a lot of threes. And if I'm not mistaken, I saw Hogstats put out a deal. I think Arkansas is a history in a program. 58 and 10 when they shoot less than 10 threes. I thought that was really fascinating. So they have a really great record, and this one adds to the mix. And they were 32 of 51 overall. But it was the second half that really turned things on. Because Arkansas, like the first half of this basketball game, May have been one of the like most fun, entertaining, just solid college basketball games, like from beginning to end of that first half. Both sides, Kentucky and Arkansas, just trading blows, great plays, great shots, great passing, not a lot of turnovers, not a lot of fouls, just high level college basketball. And that's something I can appreciate. Arkansas did hold on to one point lead, but I'll give a lot of credit to Kentucky. They played really well in that first half. And it was just a great back and forth bout between two really historic programs. But in the second half, Arkansas was able to pull away, especially very easy to do some of those things when you go 18 of 25 in the second half. That's 72%. Arkansas shot 72% and went one of three from three-point land. So they weren't even putting up a lot of threes. They were being extremely efficient and extremely smart with the basketball. Uh, Arkansas also went 11 of 16 on layups, which is big eight of eight on dunks, of course. So they really did a good si job inside the paint. In fact, they had 46 points in the paint. That's over half of their points were in the paint against a team uh, like Kentucky that I, I don't think Shibwe is just a menace defensively, but still uh, being able to do what you could, wanted to do against them was great. Points off turnovers, 23. And also you had great uh, second chance points, and you, you had 11 second chance points on that uh, with only getting 10 offensive rebounds, so or six offensive rebounds. So that, that was just a good time. So everything across the board, Great. Just absolutely great. Outstanding job, Razorbacks. And this is where it comes down to it, man. This is what it comes down to. It happens every year. We, we talked about it. It happens every year. This team gets put into a rut. This team struggles at times. This team has some ups and downs. Don't look great at, at times, whatever it may be. But when the lights come on, but when it's time to play your best college basketball, 
the Razorbacks do it. And it's just so sweet to do it against Kentucky and Rupp Arena. Three straight wins against Kentucky. Two in a row in Rupp Arena. Like, mind-blowing stuff. Mind-blowing stuff. Now, Arkansas has to play Kentucky later uh, this season in the final game in Bud Walton Arena, which Arkansas hopefully and should win that game. But at least in my low-key research, I'll have to do some more, but I thought it was fascinating. You know how many teams have beaten Kentucky four times in a row since Arkansas has joined the SEC? The only team I could find that's ever done that was Florida during their time when they had those national championship teams, and that was like the Billy Clyde Gillespie years, you know, like in, in the mix there too. So I think that Florida ended up winning six straight or seven straight, but still to have an opportunity to win four straight against the Kentucky Wildcats is huge. And to win this game and to have two wins now in Rupp, which Muss has never lost in Rupp, is huge. And I thought it was a great clip after the game. Devo Davis talked about uh, you know, playing Kentucky, and it's pretty fascinating because if you think about it, he's never lost to the Wildcats. Um, I haven't lost to Kentucky yet um, since I've been playing for Arkansas. So uh, I for sure had some coming in. Um, just knowing that the last time I played in Rupp with the team, the, the um, two years prior to this year, we came in and won, you know what I mean? Um, it was tough. Um, of course, Kentucky is Kentucky, you know what I mean? It's a really um, well-coached program um, all around. Blue, It's a blue blood. So um, we just want to come in here and just fight. And um, I think we as a collective group did that. Oh, they fought. They fought and they played well. And that's just crazy to think that Devo's never lost to Kentucky. And I'll say this. I will say this. Like, I talk trash about Kentucky and Calipari and all of that. Like, I do. I hate them. I always have. But I want to be clear with something before we go to the next segment. I respect Kentucky basketball. I do. I respect what they've accomplished. One of the greatest college basketball programs in the country. They have won championships after championships. They've been relevant pretty much the entire time that college basketball has been in its existence. They've had great coaching, great players, like all of that. I have nothing but respect for the program. I hate them, <laughs> but I respect them. And I think that there's a mutual thing there with Kentucky fans towards, uh, or at least the Kentucky program towards Arkansas. Now, nobody at Arkansas realistically is going to compare Arkansas's program to Kentucky. Like Kentucky is far and away a better basketball program. Let's just be honest about it. We all know that. But there is a lot of similarities in their culture and kind of just their blue collar nature and, and what they've gone through. And there's been some back and forth games between these two programs in their history. You know, Arkansas has had more down years than Kentucky has, but there's a lot of respect there. So as much as I like to give crap to Calipari and to Kentucky, I do respect him. I respect him a lot more than any other program in the SEC. All these little that cute little programs that start becoming relevant over the past few years and think they're blue blood because they know nothing about basketball. Think that SEC regular season titles matter. Uh, in the grand scheme of college football, because they don't. It's about the programs that have been built. So as much as I hate Kentucky and give them a lot of crap, I, I respect them a lot there too. So that's what makes this so much sweeter. This win matters because of how big of a program Kentucky is, and to do it in Rupp was amazing. And Eric Musselman deserves all the credit in the world, and I can't wait to talk about Muss and what he does and how he is just the man here in just a second. But first, I got to tell you about FanDuel, because the Super Bowl is coming up, and the only app, that you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And we're excited because they are a new sports betting partner here on the Locked On Podcast Network. And because they're the number one sports book in America, that's what makes them the best. So you know, best Razorback podcast, best sports betting app. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better because they have so many great features on sports that are fun and easy. So if you download the FanDuel app right now for Super Bowl 57, you can get your no sweat first bet where you'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. I know that uh, a lot of you who listen to this podcast, you're like, well, we're in the state of Arkansas. There's no fan duel. Why, 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 what does that do for us? Well, that's okay, because we have a lot of you listeners out there that are outside the state of Arkansas that does have fan duel. And I guarantee you, you know what I'm talking about. You've had so many people that have either tweeted at me or have commented on the YouTube or whatever it may be. So excited that uh, we do FanDuel here on this podcast, too, and we're really excited about it as well. So check it out with the Super Bowl upcoming. And if you join FanDuel.com, make sure you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on so you can claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more 
with FanDuel, the official sports partner, sportsbook partner of the NFL. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, moving on into the next segment of Locked On Razorbacks podcast, let's talk about Eric freaking Musselman. Eric freaking Musselman. This man, this man, this man. This guy has now a record since being at the University of Arkansas in the month of February of 15 and 1. 15 and 1. You know when you're supposed to start playing your best basketball? It's usually in March. But you know what gets you that momentum rolling into playing your best basketball? The month of February. And what Arkansas has done under Muss, it's just it's just been incredible. Incredible. You know, last year they lost to Alabama by one point in February. It was on February 12th, which was... Uh, a bad call, and I think Arkansas still should have won that game, but still is close. Arkansas, they lost last year in the month of February. It happens. And then if you think about the year before that, going undefeated in the month of February, where they beat Mississippi State and at Kentucky, Missouri, Florida, AM, Bama, LSU, South Carolina, like all those games they won in the month of February. That's big time. And so, uh, and I should clarify that's just the past two years, sorry, or past, you know, couple like years two, three, and four of Moss. So, yeah, I want to make sure because he did lose in his first year at Arkansas. I wanted to clear that up, but still 18 and one or 15 and one in the month of February, uh, just over in the past two plus seasons at this point in time. This is something that's not just a coincidence, this is something that's an extremely real thing. Eric Musselman, to me, is without a doubt the best coach that Arkansas could ever have. The guy's the jack of all trades. They're not saying that he is perfect because no coach is perfect. But when you're able to do the things that he does and put together things that he puts together, manage crises, if you will, injuries, uh, guys that may not be playing very well or to be struggling, the way that this guy is able to Keep working it, just massaging it, figuring out the problem. And then by the time it gets ready to get down to the nitty gritty, they flip it on. He flips it on. Because there's no doubt that Eric Musselman is able to put in incredible game plans for each and every team he goes up against. That's a fact. He can scout with the best of them. He has an assistant coaching staff that helps him out with that. Like the, the analytics, the, the next level stuff that they do and that they use. Nothing comes close, but you can do that all day long if you, but if you don't have the players to go along with it, those things aren't going to matter. Well, he's gotten the players. He's been able to put in some great talent and a lot of times been through transfers, a lot of times been through high school recruiting, but he's always been able to get guys in those positions. A lot of new faces that have to come together and there's a little bit of a struggle because, you know, when you got new players, new faces, trying to figure things out, SEC play comes in. A lot of people aren't ready for it, maybe going on the road. It can be frustrating at times, but with all of that, it's just a matter of working the problem. And once you get that confidence going and once you get those guys into good positions to where they feel so comfortable and they figure out what it's like on the road, what it's like in this conference, what it's like to be ready to go with these teams and these games and win these, the confidence goes through the roof. This is what incredible, great Hall of Fame level coaches do now Arkansas still has a lot of work to do so you know they got a lot of games in front of them and they're six and five in conference play they are above 500 in conference play they have a Mississippi State team coming into town that's actually playing a little bit better really good defensively they got they got to make sure that they take care of business in that one but the one thing that always stood out to me was especially with the beginning of the season and or beginning of the conference season and some things that they were struggling with and the the level of play that they were putting out must kept talking about this team is just not confident right now they don't have that confidence right now and when he said that i was like how could you not have confidence i mean look at you you guys are big time players big time transfers you know some of you are lottery picks 
you have talent. You're at Arkansas. You're you're under Musselman. Like, what what what? Where did confidence go? You had confidence in the beginning of the season. How did you lose that confidence? What what happened? And then you see how much talent they may have, and how well coached they may be. If you don't have the confidence to go along with it, you're going to see some results that don't go very well for you. But they've been able to slowly and surely crawl their way back, get confidence after confidence after confidence. And you think about that South Carolina game that they had earlier this week, or at least last Saturday, on the road, barely won. I kept looking at that game, and I even said, I'm going to give myself a little credit here. They didn't play well. They blew a lead. They should have won by a larger margin, but they still won. But the one thing that they did in that game that they weren't able to do in any other games of the, this year, especially, is that when they did blow that lead, they were able to storm back and take the lead and make the plays down the stretch to win. South Carolina took a lead in that game, but making a bucket there by Ricky Council, some free throws, that's no matter who the opponent is, that builds confidence. And that's what this team did. They built confidence from that to where they went into the Kentucky game. They're like, hey, we got over that blowing these leads, all that, we we got over it. Let's go in and let's put it to them. And they did. Confidence is what this team has been missing, and they got it in spades now. It is through the roof. It is through the roof. And I'll and this will be the last thing I say, uh, at least for this time around, about Musselman and um, the job that he does at Arkansas. Folks, I have a lot of coaches that I have really appreciated and adored in Razorback history. I have, but the job that Eric Musselman does and, and just the hiring of him by Hunter Juracek, he is literally pulling out the greatness that is the Razorback basketball program and putting it to the point to where it needed to be all along to what Eddie Sutton saw and what Nolan Richardson saw and what they were able to do Yes, they were great Hall of Fame coaches, no doubt about it. But they were able to see the Arkansas program and be able to make the best of it and put it in a position to be top-level, highly successful. It's there. Arkansas basketball has always been there, whether it's the facilities, the fan support, the passion, the recruiting, in-state, all of those things. It's there. You just needed the right people to be able to do that. And that's why Eric Musselman wanted this job so badly when he was coming from Nevada, because he knows, he knows, he knew that Arkansas was a sleeping giant to get back to winning national championships, to get back to being one of the best programs in college basketball. He knew it. And not only did he know it and want it, he got it and he's doing it. He is putting it into such great heights. There is not a coach out there that I would trade Eric Musselman for straight up right now. Not one single one. Now, does he have a national championship like some other coaches do? No. Are there coaches out there that might be better at him than him at certain things? Of course. But when it comes to the coach for my Arkansas Razorbacks and for your Arkansas Razorbacks, this is the man that is perfect for the job. And he proves it time and time and time again. He knows it. He gets it. He is two steps ahead of the game. Again, never perfect. It's going to have struggles. But the way that this team is doing what they're doing and getting that win last night, especially knowing with the situations with Nick Smith and Trevin Brazil and having injuries and all of those things, putting together these plans, making this team better individually and as a group, Great defense, limiting turnovers, not fouling as much, making adjustments, halftime, and also as the season goes along. How could you ask for anything more? I can't. Eric Musselman is the man. Do whatever it takes to keep this man at Arkansas for as long as humanly possible. Because I can promise you that under Eric Musselman, you may not win a championship, but I can promise you every single year you're going to be talked about like you could. They could see it. You, you have a program and you have a team that is built for March because you have a coach that's built for March. He never ceases to amaze me and what an incredible, incredible job he's done so far and especially last night. Can't wait to see what the rest of the season holds because there's no doubt that Razorback fans are just as confident now too 
and it doesn't seem like there's anybody standing in your way. If you can go on the road and beat Kentucky, you got two tough road games with Bama and Tennessee coming up, but there's nobody in your way right now that you feel like can stop you if you keep playing the way that you're playing right now. In fact, we'll talk about what's coming up next for the Arkansas Razorback basketball team on the other side of the break, so stay with us. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Arkansas has now seven games left in conference play. They are six and five in conference play, depending on uh, what happens over the night tonight and, you know, over the week and everything. We'll see where Arkansas stands. But in the standings, they're pretty much middle of the pack right now. And they have some pretty winnable games like Mississippi State. Again, tough, dirty, nasty team when it comes to their defense. They are playing better, but I think Arkansas should and will win this game at home in Bud Walton Arena. Then you go to Texas A&M next week, which A&M had a big win against Auburn. Auburn's kind of uh, a little shoddy right now, but uh, you could go, like the way you played against A&M the first time around, the way you match up, I think you could do it again against them uh, down there in uh, College Station. It'll be tough, but you know that's one that I, I like the matchup. I like the matchup itself. You got Florida and Georgia, back-to-back home games. You should win both of those. Florida's a, a good team, not great, but good. You should beat them, and then Georgia's really falling off the wagon, so you should beat them pretty easily. Then you have Kentucky, or as Alabama and Tennessee on the road. Those are going to be tough to win either one of those. But if you just split, if you just win one of those, I don't care who it's against, I don't care if it's Bama or Tennessee, just win one of those, and then you get Kentucky at home, and you can win that one. I mean, you're talking about really putting yourself in great position to have 12 wins in conference play? Go 12 and 6? Am I doing my math right? That's realistic. It's realistic. I think at this point, 11 and seven is the expectation because now that you got that win out of your way against Kentucky, 11 and seven needs to be expectation. So you don't need to lose any more than two, no more than two down the stretch. Um, and, you know, again, if it's Alabama and Tennessee, so be it. But you got to win one more road game because you have four home games left. If you can go just <laughs> win all your home games and win one road game, you'll be in good shape. You'll be a tournament team. You'll be a probably a eight seed. You know, depending on what you do in the SEC tournament there too. But uh, overall, you'll be in great position. Just keep playing as great as possible. And last night, and I know that gets talked about and brought up a lot, but last night, Jimmy Dykes was on the call, whatever. Um, but he keeps bringing up Nick Smith. And I know a lot of you keep bringing up Nick Smith. And you're curious about Nick Smith. We all are. Like, we all are doing. Like, we're just, just the way we are. Um, Jimmy Dykes was bringing up. He's like, oh, I think he returns sooner rather than later. He even brought up, oh, maybe Mississippi State is when he comes back this week. Like. I don't know if he knows anything. I don't know if he's just doing that to make a talking point or whatnot. I don't, I have no idea, you know, as far as if he, cause I, I, I just stopped listening. Cause it's like, I hear it back and forth all over the place. I don't know. Maybe he comes back. Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. But if he doesn't come back, even without him, this team is still a tournament team. This team can still go 11, seven, possibly 12 and six uh, in conference and really having a good position to be, uh, have rolling into the SEC tournament and the NCAA tournament. But however, if Nick Smith was able to come back, I know we keep playing that game, but if he's able to come back, man, 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 I don't want to even think about it. Think about the crazy expectations, but this team's playing right. We're so good right now. Uh, guys that have really been stepping up. AB, Anthony Black, battling through injury. He's a warrior. I love that kid. He is a warrior. No matter if he's hurt, or how he's feeling, he goes out there and he plays and he gives it his all. I love that kid, and I love the fact that he continues to bring it each and every game. So shout out to him. But it's really fun right now for Razorback basketball. Let's hope it continues that way. Let's hope that they take care of business the rest of this uh, season, that they need to be winning some of these games. And hopefully this one wasn't just a fluke. But with Eric Musselman, with this team and the way they're playing, I think we're going to see a lot more great performances, especially moving forward this season. Appreciate everybody listening into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.